Okay, welcome to part two. Um, let's have a little chat about the 16 inch um, strengthening panels for the front suspension. I think the first thing for me to say is, is, to, um, is that I'm only going to be kind of doing a half a job. Uh, the, um, the, the 16 inch strengthening basically consists on each side of three parts. The, the shroud, which I'll talk about in a little while, well, I call it a shroud, the bit that was taken off of the, very kindly taken off of the, the offcuts that I had, um, and, um, and two other bits that I, I refer to as laser cut panels, basically, um, and you can see one there. Uh, they come from Brickworks, and they're, and they're pretty, um, they're pretty strong old things as well. They're nicely made. Uh, basically, two you have two of those, those, those laser cut panels. Um, one goes on one side of the chassis rail, one, another one goes on the inner side of the chassis rail, uh, and then the the, the, the the shroud that I'll keep calling it that. Basically, uh, that that goes on the outside over the top of basically one of those laser cut um, panels or whatever, and. Um, basically the problem i've got is that uh i can't really get to the inner bit at the moment the subframe's in a way um along with other stuff uh the um the wiring loom on the left and a load of other bits and pieces power steering lines and uh and, and every at the moment this uh, at this stage of the project every um every second every every hour counts basically i need to get this this van out of the garage for its vehicle road test certificate mot they call it in britain and um, that's in a few weeks time and, and uh, I haven't got the time to basically drop the subframe and everything else that's around it to be able to get in there and do a decent job of, of, uh, of attaching them. So I suppose just revert to my default position of doing a half ass job, but it is what it is and, and that's the way it's going to be. So apologies for not doing the full job for you, but, um, but you'll get a, a, a decent flavour of, um, of, uh, of how it's done. And, and and those 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 laser cut panels are basically a rinse and repeat for for the inside and the outside anyway. It's the same same procedure. Uh, yeah, like I say, they go on and then the shroud goes on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up so as I talk. I'm going to put up some pictures now, and and uh, you'll see the um, you'll see the the offcuts that uh, that someone very kindly took off my hands and and removed that shroud. And and, and a big shout out to Michael Gear. Uh, very appreciative of, of what you did there um, and taking them off. It can't have been an easy job unpicking them. And, and if you look at those pictures as, as, a, as I talk, you can see that that must have took a, a considerable amount of time. So yeah, I appreciate that, mate. Uh, right, okay, let's just um, let's crack on and get inside the garage and start fitting these up. Okay, so here we are under the van. Right, it's going to be a bit of a dodgy, dodgy bit of camera work here because I'm I'm using a I'm using a phone. I've got a light rigged up and. I'm running out of hands, but just bear with me. So basically, uh, this is obviously where it's all going. Uh, I mean, I've got to clean up the areas where I'm going to be welding as well. But if I just quickly, I'll just quickly slide that in there. This is the, the part from Brickworks. Um, and you can see where that will fit. And that goes in there like so. Fitted with big puddle welds through with through them, through them those, uh, those laser cut holes that are in the, um, the strengthening piece there. And then uh, I have to cut a slot out of here, basically. So, and, and that was on the original cut, as, on the original, uh, that was how it's done on the original van that this come off. And then this will fit, I say, excuse the camera work, but this fits more or less just like that. It basically just 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 fits to the rear end of that um, that spring spring support or shroud or whatever that goes around that and gives that a little bit of extra, uh, a little bit of extra strength uh, and, and that bit there obviously welds to that and that welds up to there and you've got lots of again big powder welds inside these bits so once this is all clamped up and tight against it and 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 it gives the whole the whole shebang uh, a, a little bit more um in terms of in terms of strength i should imagine so so that's uh, that's how that all goes on and that's that's what i'm going to be doing now so yeah i'll show you all once it's all done Okay, that's that one on, and um, I'll get it all primed up now, and we can move on to something else. Okay, so that's both sides done now. Um, <clears throat> they're both uh, they've had a couple of coats of uh, red oxide primer, and I'm just about to um, to paint them black, and uh, and and that'll be done. So this is the, obviously the, um, the the side I haven't shown you before, because you can see that I've also filled in the um, the hole there 
uh, that was in the chassis rail for the the old two wheel drive uh, fuel fuel inlet pipe or whatever you want to call it. So um so yeah so that, that's that job done now. Uh, move on to something else. So as I as I mentioned um, uh, at the beginning of the last video, the first one, uh, the van um, has, has been really reliable in the in the six years that I've um, that I've been uh, driving it and and since I did the conversion. You know when you do things like that, which is quite a lot of work you kind of <laughs> you kind of drive along for the first couple of months waiting for something to fall off or something dramatic to happen and it never really did happen there was it was like I say it was um uh it was used every day more or less um it's almost like uh when you get used to a vehicle like that it's almost like sticking a coat on really it's it's just um it, it just uh it's just all good um but there were a couple of things that went wrong uh, and and not really anything to do with the van as such or the build uh, other than perhaps poor choices of um, of components, you probably remember that I um you may do you may remember that I uh, may have seen that I started off using Trailmaster shocks uh, all round, and I still have the, the the rear ones on on the van, and they've been fine with the Trailmaster springs. I think they were plus forty millimeters. The front ones, the the the, the Trailmaster heavy duty shocks uh, failed. Um, after about uh, probably around about three years, maybe four, um, I think it's probably about three, uh, and and um, basically they just lost all damping. Uh, they would you, you could just you know uh, there was there was there was no there was no damping there at all, and the, and the, and the van was bouncing around on these big old um, springs, these Trailmaster springs, like say plus forty millimeter. So um, I changed them and I put on these. Uh, Bill Steins. Well, Bill Steins are great, great shocks. There's nothing wrong with these. Um, the only problem was was that um, the piston on the on the Bill Steins was way too um, was too short to uh, to to actually come through and, and fit fit uh, fit these springs. So um, what I did is I bought the um, and you've probably seen these before. You can get these extenders, these these shock absorber extenders, so which allow you to use a longer spring. Um, so yeah, but, uh, stuck them on, all fitted fine, and drove it around again. Just before, um, just before the accident, and and, and me bringing it in here, I I, I think I, said, I mentioned earlier on, I had some some banging noises and and uh, coming from the front. And again, the the damping, um, well, became almost non-existent. It was um, <laughs> it was um, basically bouncing around, uh, although not as bad as before. Anyway. Uh, let's cut to it. Basically, what happened was, and, I, and I, oh, I don't know, I don't know why I did it, but these, these are, uh, these are uh, broke, uh, and it, it wasn't the, um, it wasn't the, uh, the extenders that, that broke. It was the actual top of the shock absorber where they screwed in, and that's on both of them. That's on both of them. So I don't know why. Um, I, it all looked good to me. It all went together nicely. Um, clearly something wasn't right and um, yeah so now I've had to I've, I've, bought, I've bought some new shocks I've got these again I'm not using these anymore they look they look like shit anyway really um, I suppose being underneath a van for six years it's you're not gonna look that great are you really but it's um anyway I, I, I I'm not gonna put these on I've got some standard synchro springs that are going to be going on the front now with these shocks and they should all fit together fine uh, and and um, uh, if anyone's got any ideas, uh, drop it in the comment section as to why these broke. Um, obviously, they put too much load on on on, on the threaded portion at the top there, and and um, and they both snapped. So that's one of the things that went wrong, uh, and, and I think, and that's probably the worst thing that went wrong, really. So again, the, the whole the whole uh, the whole project's been reliable, uh, just. Um, it's just uh, fallen foul of perhaps um, some 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 uh, poor choices with regards to components. It's not all bad though. I've got a couple of um, couple of positive reviews here. Uh, Marky Boy's seal of approval. First one goes to the uh, the Burley Motorsport uh, wishbones. They're, they're, they're brilliant. I've got nothing bad to say about them. They look the nuts and they do the job. Uh, the only thing is I, I keep on forgetting to grease the joints and I should really do that a little bit more often. But um, yeah, they're a lovely bit of kit. They really they just look good. They've been on, been on there, f they've, I've had them five years. Uh, I, yeah, it's probably one of the first things I bought. 
uh, once I've got the uh, the van out because the uh, one of the original ones um, had had a crack in it. Uh, one of the one of the standard cast iron jobbies or whatever they are forged ones. So um, yeah, that's why I bought these. They just, but they uh, just just look good. They just look good and they work. The next one for um, a positive review is the uh, is this uh, T three technique. Um, 25 millimeter anti-roll bar, sway bar, whichever way you call it, and, um, and along with the heavy duty drop links as well. That is a really, it really provides a, uh, it's a subtle but noticeable difference to the way that the van handles. I don't know if that's a contradiction in terms or what, but um, but yeah, they, they really does make a difference to the, uh, especially around the around the around the, um, the twisties, around the uh, the country lanes and that. It just feels more planted, and um, it's been on there about three, four, about four years, I'd say that's on there now, and and, and um, it's uh, it's still looking alright. It's I've just wiped it over with a bit of WD forty, and and um, it's it, it's got this heavy duty, I don't know if that's powder coating or paint, like a dimple finish, but um, a hammered finish. But they're still all still there, and it's all still looking good. And the drop links are just dirty, really. But other than that, this yeah, you know, everything's nice and tight, no, no play in them. So yeah, two like I say, two two products there that um, definitely get the thumbs up from me. Uh, and uh, you can see now that I've built up um, well this side anyway, and the other side so I've got the the dampers and the springs on. I'm just about to fit the the wishbones to that. So we're getting there. So pretty soon I shall be. Hopefully, um, you know, we're rolling it forwards a little bit and, and um, getting the engine back in. But I feel pretty good now, I'm making making some progress. So, yeah. And that's the engine back in and running. So I'm quite pleased with that. Sounds all right. Time will tell, but uh, for the moment, it's, it's running and it's, um, yeah, it sounds good. Quite pleased with that. Okay, so let's have a little interlude away from the um from the mechanics of everything and just show you some of the the, the the little bits and pieces that i've done since i last showed you the inside of the van which was probably about six years ago uh and it wasn't a tool kitted out then so starting with the the back seats and and the bed the um the the bed is a full-size one which came out of the van that i dismantled i think I raised it about six inches because I think I was originally going to fit a LPG tank underneath there. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Didn't happen in the end. But I've got other stuff under there that I'll show you in a second. Uh, it's great having a full size bed. Um, you do sacrifice some storage space, obviously, for cupboards and what have whatever. But um, it's very comfortable. You could um, you get three or four people in there if you so desired. So that's the bed uh underneath the bed i was talking about the space so i'll just quickly show you so yeah there's storage there uh there's a sleeping bag there um which doubles up as a nice duvet uh you've also got some uh have also got some chopping boards in there which are on top of that very big leisure battery i think it's 230 or 240 amp power um let me have a quick check hang on yeah 230 amp power so I mean that's got plenty of juice, and um, yeah, heavy old thing, but uh, it, it uh, it's really it, yeah, it does does the job, does it well. Obviously you've got some bits and pieces here as well, just on this thing you've got some, some nets and some power points and the voltage for the for the battery, and um, down here you've got the outlet for um one of those wonderful Chinese diesel heaters, which is underneath there as well. I have to say, um, I really do um, do rate them things. I, I was, they're, they're cheap, uh, and as it's been it's proved to be cheap, but not nasty at the moment. It's worked for a few years now, and um, you just got to keep uh, make sure that the, the the diesel stays clean, the filter, and everything. But yeah, it's fine, um, and and I quite look forward to winter mornings now and firing up the old diesel heater. I did a video for someone who was was asking how I'd installed it uh, and I'll see if I can find it somewhere and and um, and, and, and I'll add it to uh, I'll add it to this video because it kind of shows the way that I I um I rooted the the exhaust for it which kind of goes for the subframe which the Eagle 
eyed amongst you may have noticed that there was some strange pipe work going through my subframe, subframe while I was um, uh, videoing the strengthening uh, uh, section at the front. So anyway, enough of that. Um, so obviously I, I sacrificed some storage by having, or storage space, by having the, um, the, the, the double sized bed. But one of the other things that the um the the other video the other van came with was was the uh the air conditioning system which i was never going to use but i have used the, the the housing for it and made a overhead locker out of it that you can also see here kind of uh, it comes with these 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 pods I mean, oh, this isn't very good this this video apologies but um it's probably a little bit dark but it's come with these it's come it comes with these side bits as well which can't you do sacrifice some some space Hang on, let me just turn this light on uh, there you go that's it so yeah you do you do sacrifice some space but i actually thinking i might actually be able to make something some sort of storage cabinet that slides out of there as well. So at some point I might do that, um, but I don't think I really need to at the moment. Um, I was have done it. So that's that. Again, when it comes to storage, I've got a lot of storage here. This is a front runner. Well, there's two front runner cabinets, basically, that are um, that are stacked on top of each other and bolted down. And the um, you can see that I've got a fridge that's also on a rack which is, it's all, all, all secure basically and, and, and can't move. Uh, that's, that's a 60 litre uh, National Luna, they're not cheap. But uh, I have to say, when you go away, you're glad you've got that, I can tell you. I mean, I've been on some, I've been on some fishing trips over in France and, and uh, or just normal cam uh, um, uh, camping trips. But definitely when you go a long way, if you go across to another country and you're living by the side of a lake for a week, um, you're eating steak most days when when your mates are eating out of um, tin cans. So um, yeah, I'm kind of kind of well happy with that, and I haven't had any problems with it at all. So that's good. There's also a TV. You can see I've got a 12 volt TV there. Uh, um, that's that's got a Google Chromecast on it as well. So. Yeah, you basically you can yeah you watch TV or films or whatever. So again, another another essential when you're away, and um, you need a bit of entertainment. On that panel there, I've got numerous things. You can see all these little bits and pieces that are hanging off of it. Uh, there's a there's a battery charger for uh, 18650 batteries and and some other ones as well. But I use mostly 18650s in torches and what what have you. Uh, you've got some some I was just those those kind of pouches those. Those Molly web pouches that have gone on to uh, the rack, some racking. There's a saw there that I fold up saw that I've used a few times, um, either for firewood or just to clear a way through a, a wooded path sometimes. Um, yeah, so that's that. Obviously, the the, the fire extinguisher. extinguisher. Um, and uh, the floor has got the rubber. It's like a stable mat, basically. It's, I think it's about a, a, it's a good inch thick. And, um, and and it's got a lot of un insulation underneath it as well. Uh, and just some carpet. Just some carpeting down there. Uh, what else? Is, oh, blimey, yeah. The roof. And you can see that the uh, the roof is, is has been boarded out as well. And it's all covered in um, acoustic matting with, with some, uh, some downliers. They're great, they are. They're really shallow, um, low profile, and they fit in there perfectly. So I've got a number of them. I've got some uh, LEDs as well. There, so it, it kind of. I was it, with the grey. It kind of gets a bit a bit dark, like a bit, bit like a cave. So they kind of help to uh, lighten things up a little bit, and they don't use a huge amount of power. And for when you are laying in the bed with your head down this end, you've got some little touch sensitive down lighters there as well, which are um, which are quite handy. Really, you don't have to reach around. You just put your hand up, and they they just um, they switch on and off every time you touch them. So. Yeah, that's the that's the little little tour of of what I've done. So. And so carrying on a the theme of storage as well here at the back, um, which basically this this bit you've got the the mattress that goes on the top of here, uh, which is is being cleaned at the moment. Um, you've got this storage area as well that I built, which is basically this big big piece that that obviously you'd normally have the um, the lid, the engine lid in there, 
and that gives you some storage space there and you've got some flaps either side um, that give access to more storage space there handy for putting in spare drive shafts and what have you any tools and there's another deeper well just here at the front so um, plenty of storage at the back too um, obviously having all of this makes it a bit of a faff getting to the engine but you soon get used to it I'm under no, no illusions though that that, um, that staying in one of these vans for any amount of time can and, and is for me anyway uh, um, not very comfortable. Uh, I mean, I've got a, I've got an awning which I'll show you at some point when I get this out of here, hopefully, and and um, and put the roof rack back on, which turns into a uh, it's got enclosed sides and front if you if you want them. So you've got like a tent on the side of the van. But uh, these these things for me anyway. Uh, this is a tin top. It hasn't got a, a pop top, or, or certainly um, you'd get a lot more space if you got a high top as well. But for me, this in this configuration, this is more of a cramper than a camper. And, and um, yeah, hats off to anyone that goes off on huge expeditions, especially with their families. Uh, it it, it um, for me, I maybe just get maybe I'm just getting a little bit too old and and, and um, for this sort of thing. Uh, but uh, for me. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's still not a motorhome by any stretch of the imagination, and it's certainly not um, all that comfortable for any long period of time. Um, but yeah, it's all right. It is what it is, um, and and I shouldn't really criticise it because these people have been living in and out of these things and going away for 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 years and years. And also, having just spoken about the Chinese diesel heater. Uh, the van is obviously a petrol engine car with the with the EJ25. Um, so what I've done for the uh, the uh, the diesel tanks for the heater, instead of having it inside the car, because no matter how, how careful you are, you'll always get spillage. They're actually out here on the spare on the spare wheel carrier. So basically, once you've got a spare wheel in here, on here, or mounted on here, they they mount they sit nicely inside it, out of the way. So it's um. A cunning use of, uh, of of space, I think. And basically, what happens is the um, the feed cable goes down through there, through the chassis rail, down towards the the the, uh, the diesel here. So, so yeah, that, that actually all worked out pretty good, really. Um, so uh, I I found that video that uh, I was talking about with regards to um, how I rooted the the uh, exhaust for the diesel heater because I didn't really want it coming out on the same side as where the diesel heater is, is, is on, because um, that's where the, the, the door is and carbon monoxide and all that sort of thing. So uh, I, I had to root it so it comes out on, a, on the other side and it was a bit of a convoluted affair. So this is a this uh, short video is a video I did for, for someone who was asking about how I'd mounted it on, and it was easier to just do them a video and send them a link to it other than just um, write all out on an email or whatever. So, um, yeah, this is a this is a quick video that I, I did for a, a fella called Mike. Right, Mike. Um, I'm going to try and do it this way because uh, at least I can explain things uh, as I as I show you them instead of having to type it all out and attach photos to see if this works. Uh, so yeah, um, the van's currently off the road anyway at the moment because I'm just um, changing the front shocks and. So as a as luck would have it, it's going to be a bit easier to get underneath because um, it's on it's on uh, it's on stands right. So so let's dive under and I'll show you what I've done. Right. So there's a turret mount when it comes underneath uh, from underneath the back seat. Uh, excellent bit of kit. Basically, all I've done is uh, drilled the hole for it, the hole cutter. I can't remember what size it was off the top of my head, um, and then used um, mastic around here, which is dried nice and it's a dog's bollocks. I think I used. That's what it's called, and um, it's dried lovely, it's nice and sealed. Uh, right, so in terms of pipe work, um, the inlet and the exhaust, the inlet, I did exactly the same as what Keith did. Um, basically, the inlet for the, uh, the freshish air coming into the combustion chamber comes into this bit here. There's like a, a rubber a plastic blanking plug in there, and it draws uh, clean air from basically this void, which is the... Um, is the uh, the inner side of the seal uh, and it works fine I haven't had any problems um, so far uh, that I've just you can see there I've still haven't finished all this off to be honest with you um, I'm, I'm sort of like juggling jobs around this has got to be clipped up and some some protective bits and pieces like that, that I ran out of put over it 
um, and same with this wire as well for the for the pump. I've got a clip up here which I've got to put a little cable tie on. Yeah, I should do that really. Anyway, um, so as far as the exhaust goes, let me just spin around. Right, you should be able to see. Uh, that's, this is the um, the exhaust that came with the uh, the section that you get and the little muffler you get as well with the with the kit. Um, that goes down there. It's mounted on on this rail. If I just move a little bit further down now. Um, in terms of what I was going to do with the um, the uh, and how I was going to route the exhaust, I want it to come out on the off side of the vehicle because um, this is a panel van as well. There's no door over there either, um, and, and instead of doubling back and coming back around um, and coming that way, which I probably could have done, um, well I could, but I couldn't because I've got that makes sense at all. But because you can see I've got a fuel filter down there and and. Um, and if you did watch, I suppose, any of my, um, my videos, that well, you can see that's where I've routed, or routed the, um, the fuel lines and everything. So I don't really want anything hot and toasty going that way. So what I did is I bought four meters of, of this from that, um, from that website. Um, and it's, think, I think um, off the top of my head, the internal diameter of that is 24 millimeters and that fits that. Um, so anyway, uh, after a bit of thinking, I decided to take this this route here, um, and basically it goes down to the front of the vehicle, and then you'll know from your, your own van that um, the uh, the subframe has got like little holes, one here and one on the other side, and and, and I tried to think of places that, which I could like shorten the run. And come up and under it but you've got the prop shaft you've got all the gear linkages and everything there so it's really it's not it's not it's, it's not really an optimum sort of uh, a way of going so what i did is i bought some 24 millimeter external diameter well it's actually 23.7 or something like that stainless steel tube or steel tube i can't remember it doesn't really matter and and cut it to size and that basically passes through this bit and comes out the other side so what I did is this gate that gave me something here to clamp onto so the exhaust runs from back where I've just been along out of the um out of the silencer and it enters into this part of here via that piece of metal tube that's in there I'm just going to go and jump over the other side okay back again and it comes out of this side same way out of the tube and then comes, it's clipped up along this chassis rail and then just comes along down here and exits just here, just in front of the, um, the spring hanger on this side of the, um, that there. It's got like a little finisher on it as well that you can get from that same website where you buy the turret mounts and everything so really I mean it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit long it's probably not the cheapest way of doing things because this uh this exhaust tube ain't ain't cheap and like I say I bought four four meters of it I can't I've, I've got a little bit left over so I didn't use the whole four meters um but it actually works really well um so so yeah that's it really um if you need to know anything else um just give us a shout mate right so I've just received notification that the um message saying that the VC that I've sent off to be refilled and refurbed is, is going to be with me in the next few days, hopefully, sometime next week anyway. And um, so I've just cracked open the, 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 the diff that I had rebuilt for me by um, uh, Aidan Talbot. Uh, it's just been sitting there, like I say, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't got around to doing it for 18 months. Just life, like I keep on saying during this video, life gets in the way. Um, so yeah, it's all nice and nice, sexy new internals with this, new ring and pinion and um a new uh speedo drive everything's new apart from the case basically so i'm um, looking forward to putting the refreshed vc in there and i'll do a quick video of um of me sticking that in there somehow with with one hand holding the camera or whatever else but um but yeah, i'll show you show you that and um and then we'll pop it into the van and then it's almost ready to come out i've just got a few little bits and pieces to do uh, around the back where the, uh, the the bash plate goes and everything but um which is again i'm just waiting for some metal it's so frustrating when you when you order stuff up and um it doesn't turn up when you expect it to uh the, for me babe but there you go anyway so um so yeah uh next clip should be me just um popping the vc in and getting this all built up 
and uh, ready to get it into the van and fill it with oil to the level and yeah nearly there nearly there and the uh, the refreshed VC is here so that's all ready to go in uh, and uh, many thanks to Ian Holman at 025 Motorsport uh, yeah I'm gonna stick it in there now um, it's a shame really because um, I don't have anyone here to uh, to help me uh, video this but there's nothing much is really involved really so it's not, nothing exciting the only thing you've got to do is you've just got to make sure that you um you don't lose the ring light. I seem to have lost hang on a minute it's over here let me grab it okay so yeah basically what you do is you just drop drop the vc down well vc goes on there this ring goes on the top of the vc uh, that's but that spacer for whatever reason it's needed and um so what i'll probably do is i think i will I'll, I'll, I'll mount it all up in here flip it over drop it down onto the shaft obviously sticking them um, after putting some sealer down on there probably some free bond or something and um get it all tightened up get it in the um get it in the van i might even get this van out of here today right differs is in um and you can see i've got it out of the garage now just been for a test drive about eight miles or so return trip just go and get some fuel uh yeah seems okay seems okay um and again it's um it's not the most uh it's not the quietest or the most comfortable of um of motors but yeah so far so good i'm gonna sort a few bits and pieces out but it's out uh nowhere near ready yet but or finished but um at least i've, I've got it out that, out that bloody garage so good and while I remember, I might as well tell you about something else that I did. Um, you can see I've, I've fitted, um, I fitted heated mirrors. Basically, what happened was uh, last winter, or well, a couple of winters ago, I was driving along in a pheasant, flew into that and whacked it, pushed it back into the um, into the window and smashed the glass. That was on the that was on the, the genuine synchro ones, uh, and, and they're ridiculously expensive even in the non-heated flavour to, to buy. So I just went on eBay and I sourced these bigger sort of truck mirrors. Uh, they, they're not all right, they're not, they're not standard, but they're, they're slightly larger. And what I did was I bought a 12 volt pad to go on the back of the, um, back of the mirror and connected all that up via relays to the, uh, um, to the fuse box and then to the uh, I used a heated screen switch inside on the dash and yeah they work a treat they work a treat they really do I said another reason like that between them and the and, and, and the Chinese diesel you I really look forward to cold frosty mornings not that we seem to get many now it's a bit of a shame but um yeah so that's one other thing that I did as well I just thought I'd quickly do that as I just uh, just thought of it right oh so that's that's the first, uh, I feel about 60 miles, I think, um, without going and looking at the speedo, um, that the, the van has covered since I pulled it out of the garage and everything is fine. It's, uh, so far, it's all driving driving nicely. Um, so yeah, I've had a rethink on the rear suspension or on the, the rear shocks, as you know, I changed the front ones out and um, I think I've decided to to change out the back ones as well. And looking at these these old um these old shocks i don't think you can blame me really can you uh, i think if the titanic had shock absorbers and uh, one of them was brought up from the bottom of the sea i don't think it'd look a lot worse than that really and also the um the the pistons are very easy to push in as well so they're clearly past their best uh in um in in uh looks and function so on go these lovely shiny new bill steins the complement ones on the front they just turned up this morning so i'm just in the process of i've got one on and i'm just going to quickly stick the other one on and um that will be new shocks all around see i've still got to put the uh the roof rack on uh, that's more than a one-man job so i'm gonna have to list uh, enlist some hands to help me get that lift that all on there especially with the awning on which i don't really want to go go to the trouble of taking off and then just bolting it back on again if it just means another a couple of hands to help lift it all on so that will be going on hopefully in the next uh in the next few days and that's the roof rack on with a little bit of help some from some friends it's very very heavy that is especially with the the awning on there uh the awning the awning is a is a front runner um piece and uh it comes with um some side parts uh, some side sheets or side panels and a front panel with a door mosquito net and what have you and it makes life very much more comfortable when you're 
plotted up on a camp, uh, whether it, whether it be it uh, fishing or, or 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 just camping for more than a couple of days, it actually extends the living space out quite nicely with a ground sheet, and obviously you can do your cooking and whatever else have you out there with a bit of storage too. So that kind of kind of makes life um, life better when you are out cramping, but. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's the, that's the roof rack back on. There are also on the other side of the roof rack. What well, you can't see because I haven't got them at the moment. But there's some there's some uh, there's some some racking or some brackets up there basically that take the big old front runner boxes as well, which uh, you can keep some additional stuff in. I think you might have actually been on at the beginning of this video. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But uh, but yeah, they're useful too. Uh, they just start there. They go. They lock on to uh, with. Um, with some little padlocks and there's also a like a rack underneath there that takes a sliding table again from front runner which is here and um it uh, needs a bit of cleaning up it looks a thousand years old i suppose again if you're going to sit underneath a roof rack for several years on the top of a van then you're not going to look the best but yeah that's got these folding legs that come out uh, it's okay it, it, it one of the one of the stays on the legs broke for no apparent reason not long after I got it, and it was a it was a real bastard to repair as well because the thing the way the, the way the thing's put together, but it's done now. Uh, so I wouldn't really give that the the best of um, the best of reviews. But the actual system for storing it and uh, and basically getting it off is, is fantastic. Like I say, this this actually stores underneath underneath the roof rack here, and uh, it locks on with this this little thing here, which you could lock up with a with a small. Um, small padlock that would wouldn't stop anyone really really wanted it but it'll stop opportunist thieves if such a thing would uh, or person was to happen by it but um yeah so that's good i like that you so that means you've always got a, a camp table with you and uh and it stores away nicely but it's a lot of weight on this roof i have to say i'm i'm i am i'm surprised by how heavy this all is but uh but yeah it's, it's all it's all good it's all a good bit of kit and you can see also obviously i've got a reversing light that I rigged up on there that I can also turn on without being in reverse and reversing camera or actually rear view cameras not reversing cameras I've got a, like an electric mirror uh, electric um like an LCD mirror inside there and and that feed goes to that so, so that's where we are so we're nearly done I've just got to really sort out these rock sliders which are which are, um, are in a poor old state and the front bumper and that poor old back bumper still hasn't I haven't even thought about how I'm going to get that bent back into shape but I'll, I'll give it a go so that's where we are now so we're like I say as I keep on saying we're getting there righto it's probably a three or four days since that last clip and I'm in a very good mood this morning the van has just been to the to the garage and passed its yearly MOT check so it's good to go for another year always a tense tense time when it goes in there but um yeah it's all good now for like I say for another year I've basically the the things outstanding on this van now are obviously they're just the bolt on bits the the rock sliders the front bumper or the front bars and the rear the rear bumper which I haven't even set about yet really trying to get it trying to get it fixed for the moment I've just got this prepad light here, but I think you could probably see I've got the old original bumper, or well, the main part of the bumper on there, just protecting it. Just hopefully, um, just in case anything else happens. Probably not not a lot of protection, but enough there. Hopefully, anyway. Anyway, so um, so yeah, I think uh, what I've been doing is 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 I've been editing this video, this second part, and and again, it's getting ridiculously long. So. So I think this is probably where we're going to wrap this one up and um, maybe I'll come back once the bumpers are done or whatever and do some nice fancy droney panorama shots maybe of it of it of it kicking up a load of dust down a down a road or something like that who knows or stand or, or, or parked up by the beach I'll do something like that perhaps uh, and maybe also if I um, if I do get another engine block I might talk about i might do a short video of, of the rebuild of that and um the sun's coming through these trees here and ruining my video so um so yeah i think that's it really um thanks to the people who um who asked over the six years if there was going to be an update i hope you've been entertained and 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 lastly thanks to everyone if you've made it this far that is uh, thank you for watching and um yeah it's all good